Hi everyone, my name is Etienne Herrick and I'm a PhD student at the School for Environment and Sustainability at the University of Michigan, where I study ecologically based strategies for improving the sustainability of agriculture. One of the most important ways farmers can improve agricultural sustainability is by increasing the diversity of species on their farms. Lots of farms these days only contain a few crop species like corn, soy, and wheat, and rely on synthetic inputs like pesticides and fertilizers to maintain crop yields. Not only do these inputs require a lot of energy to produce, they can also lead to environmental pollution, like harmful algal blooms in the Great Lakes region and dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico, which have been linked to excess fertilizer applications on farms. To help address these problems, farmers can turn to practices that instead work in harmony with nature rather than against it. For example, the use of cover crops, which are non-harvested crops planted in windows between cash crops when fields would otherwise be left bare, can help increase on-farm diversity and aid in pest control, weed suppression, reducing soil erosion, and one of my favorite benefits, improving soil health. Now, you might ask, what exactly is a healthy soil? Soils are really complex living ecosystems teeming with bacteria, fungi, arthropods, earthworms, and more, which all contribute to functions and processes that help support plant growth. In fact, one teaspoon of soil can contain up to 50,000 species, making soil one of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. So, healthy soils are ones that are able to support all those tiny organisms, which in turn help support functions vital to crop production, like water and nutrient cycling. Since healthy soils form the foundation of our food system, today I'm going to show you how increasing on-farm diversity with cover crops can help build soil health with a little experiment that you can try at home too. On the left, I have soil from a field that regularly uses cover crops, while on the right, I have soil from a field that doesn't use cover crops. To really understand how cover crops improve soil health, it's important to know that at the end of the cover crop growing season, rather than being harvested like fruits and vegetables often are, cover crops are left to decompose into the soil and become food for all the soil microorganisms. When the microorganisms are well fed, they reproduce more, facilitate nutrient cycling, and together with other organic inputs in the soil, like plant roots, help make up what's called soil organic matter. More soil organic matter also means the soil has better structure, where the soil particles stick together in clumps, like you can see here, to form what are called soil aggregates, which help create pore space in the soil so that microorganisms and plant roots have access to air and water can move more easily through the soil. Not only is water better able to filter through the soil, but more soil organic matter also means the soil is able to retain more water, which is especially important now that we're facing shifting precipitation patterns as a result of climate change. The U.S. Midwest is expected to see more frequent and intense rainfall events, with longer periods of drought between those extreme rainfall events. This means that soils with more organic matter should have an advantage over those with less organic matter, because water will be able to filter through the soils due to more pore space, instead of pooling on top and leaving the field as runoff. And those high organic matter soils will, in turn, also be able to hold onto that water for longer when it's in short supply. So to demonstrate these concepts, I'm going to add water to each of these soils I have here and see how long it takes the water to infiltrate the soil, as well as how much water is retained by the soil by measuring the amount of water that drains through. So to start, I'm going to measure out 50 grams of each soil, which are both already dry, just using a kitchen scale here. All right, so I'm going to start with my low organic matter soil, turn on my scale here, and carefully weigh out 50 grams. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to add the soil to a funnel that I placed a coffee filter in so that when I add water, the soil stays in place, but the water can filter through. All right. And now I'll go ahead and repeat that process with my high organic matter soil. 
Here we go. Put that in my funnel here. And now I'm ready to pour 50 milliliters of water, which I have prepared in these cups here, on top of each soil and measure how much filters through using these beakers. As you can see, the water was absorbed much more quickly through the high organic matter soil than the low organic matter soil. Now I'm going to wait about five minutes to see how much water is retained by the two soils versus how much drains into the containers below. All right, so as expected, we can see that more water collected underneath the low organic matter soil, indicating that the high organic matter soil is better at retaining water. So by building up the organic matter in their soils, farmers can make their crops less susceptible to drought. If you'd like to try this out at home, all you'll need is some soil from the top 10 centimeters of the ground, two funnels, two coffee filters, something to measure out a little bit of water with, and a container to collect the water in underneath the funnels. If you don't have access to soils with different organic matter levels, you can try adding a little bit of compost to half of whatever soil you have available and compare whether or not the soil with the compost, which has lots of organic matter, performs differently than the soil without compost. I hope you enjoyed this video and remember, you're never too old to get your hands a little dirty.